a town of ghosts. Otherworldly spirits are trying to burn anyone who settles in their territory. What is the reason behind the dead's revenge on the living? Is it even possible to stop the hellish fire of this revenge? Welcome to Psychics Investigate, a channel of true investigations. Here, people who call themselves clairvoyants solve resonant criminal cases and incredible paranormal mysteries. In this episode, the psychics are going to challenge an unknown mystical force that has burned the house of Marina Shemanska from Ukraine. The firefighters who arrived to extinguish the fire say it happened as a result of a short circuit. However, why it happened remains a mystery to date. We don't know how the short circuit could have happened. The wiring in the house was freshly installed. It simply couldn't have burned all of a sudden. The Shemanskys claim that a week before the tragedy, unbelievable things began happening in their house. I came to the veranda and saw a black haze. It looked like a black cloud. And I felt that something was holding my legs, like it was gripping my knees. The house squeaked. It squeaked all the time. I heard someone's footsteps. And the next day, the entire family witnessed the icons fall from the shelves and the window panes crack. They all broke. All the panes got smashed. It was in the kitchen. Grandma and I were there, and she got so scared, all the panes simply shattered. The longer it lasted, the worse it got. Furniture and different heavy objects that people can't even move began falling in the house. We came to the kitchen and saw the table overturned. We put it back and went out, closing the door. Five minutes later, it was lying on its side again. But all of us were outside. Honestly, you don't see such things even in horror films. It's so awful. Marina and her family were afraid to even approach their house. A day before the fire, the woman went to the church to convince the priests to bless her house. But no sooner had the Holy Fathers commenced the ceremony than an incredible thing happened. Every priest has a book of prayers to bless water or home. But the moment we were ready and took the book, a page in it caught fire but there weren't any matches, nothing at all. Nevertheless, even after the blessing, the Shemanskys didn't dare to enter the house. We slept outside that night. In the morning, the woman and her husband went to work. They both work at the local meat processing plant. Their son, Mikita, and his grandmother decided to try to enter the house to take their belongings from there. In the afternoon, my boss told me, it seems your house is on fire so I rushed home. The neighbor who lives next door was first to notice that Shymansky's house was ablaze. Since she'd seen the grandmother and the boy enter it, she ran to save them. I heard my neighbor shouting, Aunt Svetlana, Aunt Svetlana. I opened the door and saw the huge flames. The house was burning from the inside. The grandmother and her grandson almost fainted. Svetlana saved them from the house the last moment. He's little, a fifth grader, poor thing. He got so scared. I shouted and dragged them out and... Now we have no house and have to start everything from scratch. Marina and her family are begging the psychics to come and help them. The family moved into another house in the same street. They are confident that the poltergeist moved there with them. We went to bed at night and then I heard something crash loudly. Boom, like somebody hurled a plate at the sideboard and the glass shattered. This is something abnormal, something from the beyond. The psychics are the family's last hope. The woman says she will not survive if their other house burns too. I'd really like them to help us find out what it is. The project's psychics Olena Kurilova and Larisa Hutsanu immediately arrived in the southern Ukrainian town of Kilia, where Marina lives. They attend the site of the burned house to tune in to the event's energy. Listen, there's a voice rumbling in the distance. You shouldn't have entered it. Entered where? I don't know. 
On our way here in the van, I had a vision of people walking somewhere covered by night, and they were holding fire in their hands. They were bearing the fire. It's a group of people, something like a secret order. You know, like those that have a centuries-old secret. What kind of mysterious order is that? And what does it have to do with the fire in the house of a seemingly ordinary family? Marina and her son approach the site of the fire, their neighbors and townsfolk surround it. I also live here, and I'm scared this thing can come to my house too. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for coming to help us. Listen, I hear rumbling. And monotonous beating, I feel it with my feet like it's coming from the underground. I had a feeling as if somebody or something were trying to break through here from the world of the dead. I have a vision. I see a boy with a stick in his hands, and on top of the stick is a human head. The human is dead. What is this? Back in the day at the old cemetery where there are garages now, a human skull was dug out. Who did it? My brother, Sergei. Do you have Sergei's photo? What did he do with the skull he'd found? Did he play with it? Yes. He put candles and different lights in it. Look, this is desecration of the dead. Spirits take revenge for such things. Oh, God. Yes, I see this man. He's about 30. He's wearing a uniform. He's a military man. What kind of cemetery was it? It was an old military cemetery. It turned out that there is an unusual cemetery in the town. The graveyard contains the remains of soldiers who perished during the assault on the local fortress during the Russo-Turkish War. Marina's younger brother, Serhi, brought the skull to their parents' home, where, until recently, the family lived. Could it be that the terrible force is the spirit that is bound to this house? But Serhi found the skull 20 years ago, and then he threw it away. You know, I don't see your brother among the living. He's dead. He didn't die naturally. It was an accident or some kind of tragedy. His car crashed while they were coming back from the seaside. What injury did Serhi have? He played with the head, and so it was. He hurt his head. Exactly. His head was injured. The spirit took him to the other world. Blood for blood, death for death, a head for a head. It was a revenge. This spirit is not related to this house. I mean, it found peace after it received what it wanted. But what is the force that I feel? And I feel the beating. Boom, boom. It won't calm down. The rumble from the underground did not stop. But it was becoming louder and louder. Look, the crows over the house. Wow, no way. They're flying in circles. Crows are both precursors of death and collectors of souls. The birds were obviously giving us a sign. Can the thing that happened to Marina's house be somehow connected with the abandoned house nearby? Come on. Nobody has lived in this house for two years. Its owners left it and moved out. Nobody knows where they went or why, because they never told anybody. The townsfolk say that the family fled because of some mystical events. The door was open, so Larisa Hutsanu decided to go inside and work there. Meanwhile, Olena Kurilova was tuning in next to the house. God! When I burned the blessed candles, they started hissing. It was a sign that there was a guest from the beyond in the house. Ah, oh dear, God. Get out quick. It... Olena, a wardrobe fell on me. There's really somebody in there, you see. At this moment, something incredible began happening to Marina. Are you unwell? My knees shook and my body is trembling and I feel cold inside, and my hands are cold. I looked at Marina, and she was trembling, and a male spirit was standing behind her. It's a man, with a scar on his face. He's burnt badly. He apparently died in a fire. It might sound strange, but the locals claim that nobody has ever burned in this house. It seemed that the spirit that scared Larissa in the house attacked Marina. We had to break the link with him immediately. 
The spirit of the man with the scar is bound to the abandoned house. It was it that made the owners leave. Everything in it banged and rattled. They were simply scared to stay in it. The spirit wasn't related to the owners of the house. I had a feeling that it had occupied their territory. But who was this man? Larissa, look, I feel the fire with my back. I'd like to leave this place. Is anybody home? Could you please let us in? As it turned out, this man and his family used to rent the house. However, they moved out of it because of the mysterious things that happened in it. It's impossible to live in there. Yes. We wanted to buy it in installments, but we lived there for no more than three weeks. After your house burned, our door opened itself. And then it all began. The rumble, the knocks, and the spoons hit one another. The psychics decided to work in the yard. Who are you? Oh my God. Something began rumbling in the house. The people got scared because there was nobody inside. Like something heavy fell inside. It turned out that a coat hanger fell off the wall. It was fixed so well here that my husband couldn't take it down, no matter how hard he tried. The man in a shirt or jacket that is smoldering. And it's smoldering and smoldering, turning into ashes. And he says, this is my house. It's his house. The locals say that, like in the neighboring house, nobody ever burned in this house too. So what kind of spirits are those that burned in the fire? And why are they forcing the occupants of the houses out? I had a feeling as if the spirits were trying to force the occupants out. And soon, instead of the town of the living, there would be a settlement of the dead. A sudden death, the same as in that house. All these events share something. I'm going to go and ask the people if anybody of them has experienced something similar. People tell me, please, has any one of you ever experienced something similar in your houses? I have. You? What's your name? My name's Tetiana. Tetiana. This woman lives nearby, and she claims that something unbelievable has been happening in her house, too. We stopped going outside after dark. There's a shadow from the window to the gate, but it's moving, as if it's floating without touching the ground, and it keeps approaching the door. I went outside, but there was nobody there, and I'm scared to go to the bedroom. A few days ago, I went to bed and felt a touch to the blanket. I felt immobilized, like I was pressed with something. Tetiana, let's go to your place. Follow me. Nearly half of the town is gathered around the psychics. Everyone is afraid that their houses can burn too. It was strange, but in Tatiana's house, there was another restless spirit. And what's interesting is that, just like in the previous two houses, it was also a victim of fire. Olena, it smells like something's burned. I touch the walls, and they're hot, like there was a fire here. There was a fire, but in the other room. A coincidence or not, but about a half a year ago, Tatiana had a fire too. Like in the case of Marina's house, the official version stated that the wiring caught fire, despite it was also new. The fortune turned upside down. Again, the card of the upturned fortune, like in that house. But who is this third spirit that the psychics see? Because nobody has ever died in fire here. Titiana's family has owned the house for decades. And she doesn't recall that anybody in her family has ever died in a fire. It means the spirit that occupied the house is a stranger. But where did it come from? What is its origin? It's a global problem, and all of the troubles are connected with fires, you see? What are the spirits of the people who burned? Where did they come from? And why are they trying to force the people out of their houses? There's some kind of force here. I have a feeling it is spreading everywhere, like it's growing roots. It's hard to tell whose property hasn't burned here. Our garage burned down with the car in it, and it also happened to a similar double house over there. They had a fire twice, and it was so fierce, so powerful. What's that? The smell of burning, the same as in every house Olena and I had visited, started coming from the ground. And the voice. Like a roar. Like these are people from the beyond. And fire. 
It's somehow connected with the spirits that have occupied the local houses. The ground moves under my feet and then collapses. It's at the grain elevator. The ground collapsed there and you can see the entrance. What entrance? To the catacombs. The old town? The underground town. Yes. Let's go, we're wasting time. It turned out that ground collapsed at the territory of the grain elevator recently. This woman saw what is there underground. I climbed down there and saw arches and a room. It was deep. The site of the collapse was covered with a concrete slab, but Olha gave us the photos she took inside the hole. If you look closer, you can see the tunnel. There are restless souls there, murdered people. This is where they died. The spirits of the people who died from fire in the tunnels brought the devastating force. And these spirits treated the people from the town as enemies. They burned. The exit was blocked. They were sealed up here like they were in a bottle. You see, the people were murdered and they weren't buried and no ritual was performed. They're blocked inside there, like in a crypt. This is incredible, but the psychics mentioned this at the beginning of the investigation. I see people. They're walking covered by night, and they're holding fire in their hands. They're bearing the fire. The people were burned alive, but what were they doing here? Who burned them? And why are they taking revenge? They defended this area. Was it a war or what? Only after the investigation, we learned that the psychics described the events that took place 500 years ago. Kilia was under Turkish rule for 300 years. The famous Kilia Fortress was, of course, the invading force's main fortification. The Turkish soldiers built a network of underground passages in the event they were assaulted. They dug a series of underground passages that extended as far as the Dniester. Ukrainians who lived in Kilia were forced to guard a part of the tunnels that led to the river. Who's guilty of your death? A man with a cup, a goblet. The man who drank blood killed them. I couldn't believe it. Did this mean their murderer was a vampire? This is unbelievable. But it turned out that in the late 15th century, the notorious Count Dracula attacked the fortress. Vlad Cepes, the renowned Romanian ruler, or more precisely, the renowned Count Dracula, attacked the Turks, but was defeated at the Kilia Fortress, infuriated. Dracula burned the entrance that led to the tunnels under the fortress, and then he ordered to cover the entrance that the imprisoned Ukrainians guarded with earth. They stayed there forever. As we found out, Count Dracula indeed drank blood. Not because he was a vampire, though, but because he had porphyria. Porphyria is a genetic condition in which a person can be burned by the sun so strongly that they may even suffer blisters. Currently, among the methods of treating porphyria is plasmapheresis, the clearing of blood. But there's a legend that in the Middle Ages, people drank the blood of animals, which made them feel better. Olena, look, I feel that the man who burned these people preserved their souls in the tunnel. It's like he used some kind of spell. An elderly woman with long black hair taught him how to do it. It turned out that when he was 12, Vlad Tepes was taken a prisoner by Turks. He spent four years in prison in Constanza. The boy was an heir to the throne, so the Turks gave him a servant, a captive gypsy woman. Could she, as the psychics feel, have taught the boy the secret lore? Was it Dracula's spell that held the souls of the people burned alive underground for so many years? These souls are restless and the pain that they suffered in the final minutes of being alive won't let go of them. They didn't understand what had happened or why they were dead. This is why they keep coming back to where they used to live, to their land where their houses used to be. They were bearing this awful energy. We needed to calm them down, perform the burial service, open the way to the other world, or else they threatened to turn the whole town to ashes. The clairvoyants carried out the complex ritual next to the slab over the entrance to the ancient town for over an hour. A seal, a key, a lock, a tongue, 
עיניים. But I'd still recommend that the locals bring a priest here. They all need to have the proper burial ceremony. Thank you so much. It's impossible to believe how the energy of the terrible crimes of the past almost ruined the entire town. But the psychic's ritual seems to have helped, and the awful series of fires stopped. If you're impressed by the story, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Many more incredible stories are still to come.